for real, for real. Cosmic psychedelic funk is what I came to do. Ooh. Yep. Hi. I'm so bad. Good evening, everybody. I'm Alan Black, and I am one of the co-hosts of this TV show called The Arthur's Authority Lounge, which is the official TV show for Arthur's. I'm excited to be here as one of the co-hosts. I'm really excited because we have here today a fabulous, fabulous woman. She's one of our co-hosts as well, Miss Nicole Lewis. Nicole. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Um, it's been a long time coming for me to, to hop on. Um, I know I've been pretty busy, so I've been kind of an absent, <laughs> an absent tea co-host. <laughs> well, and audience, she has been absent, air quotes, because she is so busy doing some things here in the Omaha community, but we're going to get into that here in just a few minutes. But again, we want to thank you for spending time with us this evening. The purpose of the show is really about authorship. It's about providing a, a platform, an environment where us as authors have a chance to, to tell our story, to share the story about how we began and how we got to a point of completion in order to get our particular book out there. And so we're excited because a lot of times, as I'm sure you agree, Nicole, we don't get to hear the story. We don't get to hear yeah. the story of exactly what it took to get there. We don't get to hear the, the challenge, the difficulties of the challenge, things of that nature in that particular arena. So this is good for us to do this. We're excited. We're having a lot of authors here from the Omaha, Nebraska area. But we're excited because we're fully expecting that as we grow this TV show, and thanks again to Takara and Nicole for birthing this idea. They invited me to be in. I said, hey, I'll try it. What the heck? I'm, I'm good for it. So, <laughs> But I'm blessed to be a part of this great, great TV show with two dynamic ladies, Takara and Nicole and Nicole Lewis. But again, we're excited because we're looking at not just local, but we're looking at national. And hey, you never know where it leads. We could go international. We just don't know. We just have to see how things go. But... All that having been said, what we're going to do this evening, we're just going to kick back, Nicole and I. We're going to talk about the TV show. We're going to talk about our journey, how we got here, and where do we go from here? Because I'm a big believer that when you reach, say, the mountaintop, you can't stop there. You've got to keep going. You've got to say, okay, there's another mountain for me to climb. There's somewhere else I have to go. So maybe that's just me. I don't know. I just do what I do. So, but hey. For right now, we're going to talk about the fabulous Nicole Lewis. So, Nicole, Nicole, let's talk about you, what's happening. How did you get to be an author? Where did all this begin for you? Um, so, it's very interesting. It's a very interesting story. I did never thought I was going to be an author. I'm, my educational background growing up was very disruptive. So my spelling was really horrible. My grammar was really horrible. My, my actual reading was very, very slow. I could read at, uh, at my grade level, but I was a slow reader mm -hmm. because uh, the process took longer. Um, so I never thought I would write a book because who wants to read a book from somebody that can't spell words? <laughs> <laughs> so um, in that process though, uh, I was asked to tell my life story um, in 2008. Okay. And so in 2008, first, I didn't want anybody to know my life story. I didn't think it was important. I didn't think anybody would care. I didn't think it was um, that it would impact anybody. Mm -hmm. And I spoke in front of 150 teenagers. Really? And probably about 30 staff members um, at a summer jobs program. And the impact that it made and the transformation it made to the young people in the audience was started my journey on speaking. That was my first time okay. as a speaker. And so for years, that's what I did. I told my life story, I did workshops, I did trainings, um, those kinds of things. 
and I kept getting asked, when's the book coming out? I'm mm. like, book? I'm not writing a book. Um, you guys don't want to read a book that I, you guys don't even want to read a paper that I've written, let alone a book. Um, but after a while, it's, then it started coming, when's the movie coming out? I said, how do we go from a book to a movie? That's a big job. <laughs> so I realized that I was really being a disservice. I'm standing in front of a group of people for an hour or 30 minutes. They only get to get what little bit of information I can give them, but they want to know the details. Mm -hmm. They want to know how did, how did I become who I became? They want to know what was that journey like? They want to know the, the little, the details of the conversation, right? And so um, I started writing. In that process of writing, mm -hmm. I, hadn't, I thought I had healed from all the trauma and all the things that I've been through. Um, but for me, when you're writing it and you're reliving it, because as you're writing, you're reliving that situation. And so I had to go through a healing process while I'm writing. I'm writing, I'm healing. I'm writing, I'm healing. I'm writing, I'm healing. I'm digesting, I'm reflecting. I'm having to be reminded that I'm no longer in that space. Um, I, can, I can remember a time while I was writing a scene um, a chapter in my book and I was so angry that I just I the kids had asked me a question because I'm raising my kids at the same time and going to school and working mm -hmm. and all those things as being a, a wife and a mom <laughs> and um, I started snapping on everybody and I started treating my husband really crazy and he's like wait a minute what is going on and I was like I don't know why are y'all bothering me and he had asked me, well, what are you writing about in your book? And I explained to him, he said, babe, you're, that's not happening right now. That's not what your life is right now. It's okay for you to be back in the present with us. We didn't do those things to you. And so that process of that coming back to reality helped. And it took me a long time for me to write my book because that was a, a long journey for me. Uh, and not everybody's books is going to be like that. Mm -hmm. um, I've written another book that took me a week long to write it. So it's really, it depends on the types of books that you're writing and what message or what healing process is that you have to go through in that journey of writing your book. So the first book, with the level of difficulty you were experiencing, how long did it take to write that book and complete it? Um, so technically, I'll put it like this. The first book, writing it, from my, from my perspective, because then there's other um, avenues that, that take place after you write your last sentence. Your last sentence is never your last sentence, by the yeah, way. <laughs> that's true. Boy, that's true. <laughs> um, so that took me eight years altogether. Um, about 791 pages. That many pages? Yeah. Wow. Um, and my daughter, I love her so much. She's an avid reader. And she's like, Mom... I love reading big books, but that's a lot. That's a lot for somebody to read. And I was like, oh, okay. So we split that book into two books. Okay. Um, and so it took a long, it took a process of it going through editing and stuff like that. And that took mm, about five years altogether. Well, I can't, it wasn't five years. It was, it was like a year and a half of the editing process. Mm -hmm because I was going through, so as, as an author, dealing with an editor, that's a whole nother conversation. Oh yeah, <laughs> I know that feeling. That's a whole nother subject. Of what is like having that conversation of feeling like they're taking from you, they're taking from your story, they're yes. rewriting it, and that's not the case. But I had to, that was another healing journey that I had to go through of giving over my baby. Because what people don't talk about yeah. is your books are your babies. That's tough. And so um, we split it in half. We found a great space to split it in half. I mean, and it made a lot more sense. The first book is chronological. The second book is kind of a lot of chaos. So it's taken us a little bit longer for us to do the editing on the second half of the book. Mm -hmm. um, but that one is gonna be amazing when, it, when it's finished. So the second book is more like, it's sort of like part two of the original book, that's what you're saying? Yep. Okay. So the first book is A Girl's Secrets. It takes you from age five to high school. Okay. 
The second book is A Woman's Secrets. So it takes you from high school to when I got married. Fascinating. Yeah. So as a, it's interesting as an author figuring out um, where's a good stopping point mm -hmm. if you are writing a series, because my daughter's like, series is what's, what's popular. Series is what you need to be doing, mom. And I'm like, okay, I just want to get this done and over with. <laughs> That's what my thought was. <laughs> you know, it's another, <laughs> let me get this done and over with. Um, but I, I think putting it into a series makes a lot more sense because um, what's in the second part of the book, I would highly suggest um, for a more mature audience. Mm -hmm. I'll put it that way. Okay. Than what the first half of the book is. Um, so as uh, when you're talking about the, the journey of authorship, and then I never thought I was an author. That was the other aspect. I wrote a book, published it, and then like I'm telling people I'm an author, Mm -hmm. But I'm like, no, you're only an author if you've written five books. Know, you're only yeah. an author if you've written 20 books. That a concept of, well, I've only got one book published. I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not, a, I'm not a published author. So part of that at that level is the acknowledgement that you are an author. I can identify with that because when I wrote my first book in 2017, it came out and then I had friends, Nicole, that were saying, Alan, that's great, so I want to come and have my book signed at the book signing. And I was legit thinking to myself, why are they coming to, what's a book signing? I didn't know what a book signing was and I couldn't figure out why do they want me to sign their book because that's for people who write books. So I had a hard time as well saying, oh, I guess I'm an author. Because I'm thinking, like you said, an author's got 20 books, 30 books, New York Times bestseller, and so I'm like, I'm just me. Mm -hmm. So to me, that's a part of the evolution of someone becoming an author is the self-realization that, hey, you are an author don't minimize the success you've been blessed to achieve. Yes, definitely. And it's crazy, once you publish a book and other people are like, well, you're an author, and they're, like, there's this fandom that happens, there's this level of like celebrity kind of situation. Like, I know we're not like big mm -hmm. time, we're yes. not, yes. you know, I'm nowhere close to, um, anybody on in the, that we know in the movies or anything like that but um or a zane i'm not a zane um writer right which is a, a, a popular um author mm -hmm. but people have access to me so they have access to ask questions that's the other thing is that when somebody reads your book then they then they they run up to you while you're in the grocery store <laughs> you've been minding your own business and they're like hey hey what happened to this character hey hey what happened here hey tell me why how did you and what did you and you're like uh i'm really an introvert i, I really <laughs> having to come out of your shell as a as an author mm -hmm. then you're realizing that you have to come out of your shell because then you have fans and you're like how do i have a fan is just me. Exactly. So, so yeah. how are you handling that part of this journey? That part of this journey has been interesting um, because I have people that's been watching me for the last, uh, I want to say 16 years almost, um, as a speaker. So I've got random people that have met me through my speaking that'll run up to me. And now as an author, they're like, oh, no, I read your book. I need you to, I, I passed it on to so-and-so, and it helped me with this. And I'm like, oh, to see that impact mm -hmm. validates me as an author. And it's not really just as an author, but it validates my message and my intention behind my books. Um, we as authors should have an intention of why we're writing. Exactly. You know, um, and my intention was to start conversations. So, Alan, what was your intention in your books? I think for me, with my first book, 
my journey as an author really was not, say, along the path of authorship as such. Because of my musical background, I'm a lyricist. The lyricist is the person who writes the words that you hear in the song. So I had done that for probably 25, 30 years. Multiple genres doing it, ranging from gospel to R&B all the way up to country. So I had done that through most of the 90s, the 2000s. But then in 2015, <clears throat> I just began to move in a new direction. And so, <clears throat> excuse me, I began to move in a direction of of authorship, which was completely unexpected because I was actually, Nicole, I was that person who was always telling other people, man, you got a book in you, man, you need to be writing that book, or hey, sis, <laughs> you know, you need to write that book and get it out there. So I, I'm putting that out there. There was never a time when I thought it would come back full circle to me. So I'm a Christian inspirational author, so in my situation, it was just a thing of beginning really in 2016, God just began to move me into the direction of becoming a Christian inspirational author. I had no plans to do that. I had no experience. I honestly remember when I wrote my first two chapters in my first book. The first book is called Here I Am Lord. And my writing style is very down to earth. It's very reflective, observational. Because most of the chapters in all three of my books are like three or four pages long. But I'll never forget, Nicole, I wrote, I wrote my first two or three short chapters in the first book. And I was actually doing this at my part-time job just between calls because I work at a hotel place. So I would write this stuff up and I would get up, maybe go get some water, some coffee or something, come back. I couldn't remember what I'd written and it scared me mm -hmm. because I had never experienced this before because of my academic background being very structured, being very analytical. I'm used to just doing things like A and then B and then C and D. So when God had me to become a Christian author, he completely changed my writing style whereby I was literally writing stuff and 10 minutes later I couldn't remember what I'd written. It scared me to the point where I remember I talked to a friend of mine who's a pastor and I said, okay, what's going on here because this isn't who I am. Am I okay? And he said, well, are you going to be obedient to what God's calling you to do? And I said, mm. <laughs> and I, no, I, I legit said it like that because I, I yep. wasn't with this like, this is taking me out of my comfort zone. Mm -hmm. So I said, yeah, because this is not who I am. And so for me, it's been a journey of taking me out of my comfort zone mm -hmm. and pushing me into a whole new arena that I did not anticipate that I was not necessarily looking to be involved with, but it's, it's amazing how, and you and I and Takara have talked about this, how things happen, how momentum and life can just sweep you along and before you know it, you're, you're over here and you're thinking, how'd I get here? And so that's been my journey through all three of my books is to be in a position where I've moved into different arenas that I had no ambition to really do. My writing, my heart of heart is still with lyrics, but I've been blessed because of what you and Takara were saying. Well, you were saying you do know, even if you're a lyricist, you're still a writer. And I was like, really? because I had not thought about that in that capacity. And one of the things that's great about the writing and the authorship is there's so many different elements and areas of writing that each of us have the capacity to tap into. I'm starting to realize that now. 
Mm -hmm. I was just doing the lyrical thing because that's what's on my heart. That's what I love to do. And you guys were like, well, you mean you're a writer? And I was like, I am? Yep. So that's been You've really been for me. You've been in the me. game then for... I, yeah, I guess I've been in the game for 30 some years. I, I didn't know I was in the game. I didn't know there was a game. I'm, I'm, like, I'm just doing what I'm doing. So yep. that's been the great thing. And so we're going to transition into an organization that the three of us are building. Triple AG, I'm gonna let you kick it off and tell the artists what that's all about. Yeah, um, so it's the African American Authors Guild. Um, that was birthed out of um, doing all my research while I was becoming a self-published author. Um, and Takara is a publicist, um, which is amazing. So she brings that to the table. Oh, absolutely, and absolutely. And so I was having a conversation with her about how all there are, there's all these programs that are out here. They want thirty thousand dollars, ten thousand dollars, fifteen thousand dollars, and it's you know as a as a new author, specifically when you're not like you said, you're not even that's not something I thought I was gonna do. That's not I don't have a, a boat you know a boatload of money sitting over here waiting to go. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm gonna be an yeah. author, so yeah. let me just dump this yeah. into it. And and you still have to figure out stuff for yourself. Exactly. Even if you pay a company $30,000, they still expect you to market yourself. They still expect you to promote yourself. And so when me and her met up, um, and I met her, it was, the way that I met her was amazing, first and foremost. I don't know this story, so tell me. I really, <laughs> I gotta hear this. We got a few minutes, but I gotta hear this. Um, so my husband was doing, so my husband was doing spoken words. So my husband was a rapper when I first met him. And then he went from rapping to spoken word to speaking. Wow, what amazing. Um, yeah. And I normally don't get a chance to go to his events. This was one of those events that I would just so happen to be able to be there. And as I was leaving, I think Leo told me, my husband told me, he said, you need to talk to her. And it was just magic. It was, that's the only way to describe it. And so we were just kicking around the idea of what do we do for authors? And then Takara mentioned you, and then we brought you along, and we're like, yes, we need to have this, yes. this group yes. because um, we need to have resources for new authors. We need to have a space that they can come and just be comfortable with themselves and be culturally comfortable with themselves mm -hmm. and, and understand the power that the written word has. One of the best-selling books was written thousands of years ago. And our books are meant to be thousands of years later still read. Exactly. Um, and so as a triple AG, and we call it triple AG because it's a little bit easier to say. We tell, tell, <laughs> tell what the name is, the official name. <laughs> so uh, the African American Authors Guild, um, which is where the triple AG comes from, um, was intended for us to get together. So we do networking events. We do author happy hours. We've got a conference that's coming up. Super excited about the conference. Exactly, exactly. Um, we have Authors Happy Hour that's coming up on um, June 28th. Mm -hmm. um, we'll be at Two Dads in a Bookstore. So also highlighting not just authors themselves, but all the different pieces exactly. that come along with authorship. There's so many different things that come along with that. So, And, and that's so important because one of the things that I had to experience starting out was when I did my first book, it was just kind of a journey where I'm just kind of going along this road. I have no idea where I'm going. I didn't know what to do. And so to get through that part of the journey, it was difficult. But the thing that I'm excited about is when I was able to get connected with you and Takara is the fact that if we can create and we are going to create and we are creating a vehicle that stands as a place where aspiring authors can come and get help and get information and it being in a non-threatening, non-competitive, non-judgmental environment. Exactly. Because as much as anything I've learned throughout my journey, and hopefully you've learned the same, is that we all have a story to tell. But the most difficult part of that is, I want to tell my story, how do I do it? And that's the part that I think really hinders a lot of people because mm -hmm. they say, 
I don't know what I'm doing. Well, with the African American Arthur's Guild, AAAG, we're excited because now we're putting in place a vehicle that we say, hey, we can help you, we want to encourage you. There's information here is creating a collaborative environment. At least that's what I'm taking from this. Yeah, definitely. Um, so one of the things I really enjoy, our first one was um, we did a panel discussion, mm -hmm. our, our first event. Um, we had people coming from out of town yes, to that we did. event. And so we started going, okay, yes, we had originally started focusing on Omaha, but we're like, no, this is, this is national, international. Um, anybody is welcome, whether you are black, or not, it doesn't matter. Um, we're all authors, exactly. first and foremost. And um, like you said, starting those questions of where do I start from? I've got this story I wanna tell, but how do I start writing? And then our next event that we had, we did uh, um, the vision board. That's right, yes. Um, and so that was amazing. Um, just instead of looking at the grand scheme of things, just breaking it down to quarterly. You know, in the next three months, where do I see myself as mm -hmm. an author? Um, do I currently have a book that I'm working on? Do I want to finish that up? Or do I just have a couple of chapters I want to get done? Or do I just want to network with other authors and find out, you know, where did they sell their, where do they sell exactly, their books? Exactly. Where do, who's, who prints their books? Um, who is their, how do they market? Um, who do they have edit? Do they have ghostwriters? There's so oh, many questions just, yeah. that we get asked. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So. Now, the unfortunate thing about right now, we're down to just about 30 seconds or so. We can keep talking about this forever. <laughs> but to the audience, Nicole and I, Takara, we're going to continue to share each of our journeys via the African American Arthur's Guild. And then as well, we'll continue to build and continue to promote the Arthur's Authority Lounge program as well. So uh, we're excited because we see a need. And what's important is if there's a need, what can you do then to fulfill that need and make that journey easier for somebody else? So we've got a wrap, but we're going to keep talking about this as we go forward. Thanks again for joining us. We will see you with the next episode. We're out. Take care. Bye-bye.